Hi, I'm Donald Tom, the Executive Director of the Colorado Railroad Museum. I'd like to welcome you to this holiday edition of the Iron Horse News video magazine. The museum is bustling in every department right now as we finish the year. This time of the year, we reflect on our accomplishments and where we want to be in the year to come. And every year, we raise the bar a little higher to fulfill our mission. It's very exciting to watch the change unfold here. So in this edition, Andrea Bester is stocking our Depot General store for the holiday. She's got something for everybody on your list. So come out, visit our web store at coloradorailroadmuseum.org. Kathy McCardwell, our archivist, explains all about ICC maps what they are, why they're important, and how you can add one to your own personal collection. Carla Ehrenholz, our education director, lines out the popular rails and cocktails schedule for 2014. And Jack Campbell, our chief mechanical officer, gives us an update on some important rail cars we have in our collection from the Uinta Railway that went out of business in 1939. And finally, Lauren Giebler, our curator, will talk to you about the opening of two new exhibits. There's a lot going on today, so let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to the General Store. I'm Andrea Bester, store coordinator and buyer. Here in the gift shop, we are gearing up for the holiday season. Come see us or our improved website for all your holiday gift shopping. We have a wide arrangement of gifts for both children and adults. Memberships can be pre-purchased and make great gifts for families this year. Remember to call or come in for gift certificates that can be purchased for the rail fan at heart. We have also recently published our 2013-2014 catalog, which is available as a downloadable and printable PDF. 2014 is going to be an exciting year for the general store. Check our General Store News on our website for more information. See you next time. Hi, I'm Kathy McCardwell, archivist and librarian at the Colorado Railroad Museum. This edition, I want to talk about one of our most frequently referenced map collections, valuation maps. In 1919, the Interstate Commerce Commission was concerned with collecting data about holdings and infrastructures of all operating interstate railroads. Thus, railroads, those that ran interstate, as well as those within a state but participating in interstate transportation, had to generate information, both textual and graphic, regarding their infrastructure, main and branch lines, sidings, bridges, tunnels, crossings, structures, and so on. The drawings and associated notes also provide information about who owned land along the railroad right-of-way. The Colorado Railroad Museum has a sizable collection of valuation maps. Our largest holdings are those for the Denver and Rio Grande, but we also have Denver and Salt Lake, Colorado and Wyoming, Colorado and Southern, Colorado Midland, Colorado Central, Great Western, Missouri Pacific, and Union Pacific. We also have smaller, more fragmentary holdings for a number of other railroads, including the Rio Grande Southern, Southern Pacific, and Western Pacific. We also have valuation notes, which accompany the maps, for the Denver and Rio Grande, and for some of our Union Pacific holdings. Originally useful for governing bodies, today these maps and associated notes and revisions are useful to railroad historians, modelers, land use attorneys, and surveyors, among others. Because these are some of the library's highest use items, and because our originals are in many cases fragile, the library has reproduced many of our valuation maps in bound sets, and at a more manageable size. Reference copies are available in the library reading room. These sets are also available for purchase through the museum's gift shop. For more information about access and duplication, visit our website, coloradorailroadmuseum.org. With specific questions about our holdings, feel free to contact the library at 303-279-4591 or via email to library at crrm.org. Hi, I'm Education Manager Carla Arnholtz. The full 2014 schedule of Colorado Rails and Cocktails is now available. This adult lecture program offers you a fun Friday night while discovering a piece of Colorado history and the important role that railroads played in shaping the West. We're now offering a Rails and Cocktails season pass for a limited time, so you can make sure and guarantee your seats to these often sold out lectures. 
Season passes would make a great holiday gift for your favorite rail fan. The 2014 schedule includes many new presenters and topics that you won't want to miss. In February, Preeti Burkholder, author of Ghost Towns of the Rockies, will return to explore the fascinating stories behind the historic castles of Colorado. The April presentation, The Lonely Pyramid on Sherman Hill, with presenter Annalie Freilich, tells a captivating and largely unknown story in railroad history on two of the Union Pacific and Transcontinental Railroad's greatest champions. In June, storyteller Steve Lee will captivate audiences with the legend of Kate Shelley, railroading's most famous heroine. Coming in August, we are thrilled to host Tom, Dr. Colorado Noel, who will take us on a journey back in time to the historic streetcar suburbs of Denver. October's presentation, Firing on the Grand, will reveal the female perspective of working on the railroad with presenter Diane Rabson, as she tells us what it was like to be the first woman in Pueblo, Colorado to operate locomotives for the D&RGW Railroad. The year wraps up with our own curator, Lauren Giebler, who will present The American Hobo and share her fascinating research into creating a thought-provoking exhibit of the same name. Each lecture includes two drink tickets, light snacks, and admission to the museum from 5.30 to 8 p.m. Check out our website for more information and to reserve your tickets today. Our volunteers here at the Colorado Res Railroad Museum have been very busy lately. Uh, we've been working on the 491, a K37, that we uh, acquired from District Colorado recently. Uh, we have a rider car project that we're working on uh, for our, our, our train rides that we give around the Railroad Museum here. Uh, we have a wonderful standard gauge exhibit now that has both uh, passenger and freight equipment exhibited side by side in the back of our property that's coming along nicely now. And uh, we're very fortunate to have a lot of very nice narrow gauge historic equipment here that we've currently been working on. Uh, inside the roundhouse right now, we have what originally was a first class Pullman for the Rio Grande Western that was uh, bought up by the Uinta Railroad in the early 1900s and turned into a, a very unique combine car. Uh, it's inside the roundhouse being restored. We're gonna be putting uh, correct passenger trucks underneath it built from scratch. The B-8 originally was a business car for the Rio Grande Railroad and uh, later bought up and used on the Uinta Railroad also. Uh, recently we have painted the exterior of it, uh, built some passenger car trucks for it, and uh, uh, volunteer hours into this car are huge. We have a volunteer force that we really, really appreciate their efforts that they put into uh, keeping this historic equipment looking good. Uh, and and uh, their efforts lead to what you're looking at right now. Hi, I'm Lauren, curator at the Colorado Railroad Museum. This month we are busy installing new exhibits. The volunteers behind me are working on our latest indoor exhibit, The American Hobo. Hobos started riding the rails in the United States in 1870, and they are still riding today. From bindle stiffs to depression era hobos, turn of the century socialists to the hobo punks of today, this exhibit covers 140 years of hobo history. It includes photos, personal stories, and hobo symbols and slang. In addition to the exhibit, I'm also giving a lecture on hobos in December as part of our Rails and Cocktails lecture series. Whether through the exhibit or the lecture, I hope you get a chance to check out the fascinating lives of hobos. Outside, we are working on several car exhibits, the first of which is a display in our Denver and Rio Grande Western kitchen car. This display will illustrate what it was like to work in a kitchen car and just how many supplies were needed to feed a maintenance of way crew for an entire week. It was a lot of food. This will be a permanent display. Our Rio Grande Southern bunk car and Denver and Rio Grande caboose are also slated for exhibit installations. Things are always changing here at the Railroad Museum, so stop by and see us sometime. 
Hello, my name is Bill Henderson, and I'm on the Board of Trustees of the Colorado Railroad Museum. I frequently get asked if my background had anything to do with railroads. So just a few words on how I happen to be here. I do not have a background in railroads. I was in insurance administration. I do have this wonderful old truck, a 1928 Railway Express truck that was my dad's. And that's a whole story in itself. Chuck Alvey, who was the executive director at the time, heard about my truck and asked if I would show it when he was having a steam up. I agreed, brought the truck in at the next steam up. Chuck and I visited during the day and in the conversation he said he needed help, more volunteer help. He said, for example, the museum did not have a docent or tour guide program. That was in 1997. I put some ideas together was joined by Al Frank, and we drafted the protocols for a host program. We were soon joined by Larry Dorsey and along with a few other folks, and a host program was underway. In 2002, it was decided we would do our first Thomas the Train event. I was the volunteer coordinator. None of us knew really what we were doing, but with the help of 323 volunteers, including 176 students from the School of Mines, we had a successful event. We have held a Thomas event 11 more times since that first one in 2002. I later became a member of the advisory board, then a trustee, and for three years I had the honor of serving the board as president. A couple things were accomplished during my term as president that I think are significant. One of them is we developed a strategic plan we continue to look at that strategic plan and monitor it as time goes on. The second thing is we hired an executive director named Donald Tallman. We hired as an executive director someone who did had no railway experience, but he had a lot of other experience and he was a good businessman. He's become a great executive director. We have probably the best staff we've ever had. We have a very competent chief mechanical officer. So you know what energizes me about this place? The fact that we have a ever increasing membership. We're over 2000 members now. We are on the doorstep this year of having 100,000 visitors that come to our museum. We constantly bring new events that attract new people to our museum. People say they're pleased and proud of some of the changes we made. And we're listed now as one of the top 10 attractions in the Denver metropolitan area. I'm proud to be a member of the board of directors of the Colorado Railroad Museum. I think this is a wonderful place to be a volunteer. I don't think you can beat it. Wow, programs like these take a lot of resources. Please consider a year-end gift to the Colorado Railroad Museum. We're a 501c3 and your gift is fully tax deductible. Your end of the year gift will help us fulfill our mission to preserve and convey the rich history of railroading in the Rocky Mountain region through acquisition, research, exhibition, and education. I'm Donald Tallman. Lose track of time. <laughs>